If I say to you the name Genghis Khan, you immediately have this image of a warrior and a warlike people who are pounding across the steppes of Europe about to take over a powerful horde being the leadership of Genghis Khan. But if I say to you Irving Khan, it's a guy who owns the deli in the old neighborhood. Even just changing the first name makes a great deal of difference. And that's what we're talking about this week in the Torah. This week we start reading the book of Exodus, which in Hebrew is known as Shmot. Shmot means names. And it starts out with Ela Shmot B'nai Yisrael. These are the names of the Israelites who have gone down to Egypt. Our rabbis pick up on this opening of the book of the story of the Exodus and say what and say and ask the question what are the reasons why our people deserve to be liberated from Egypt and one of the many reasons the rabbis give is that lo she knew et shamam that they did not change their names now that's an interesting comment because we know that there are people who change their names so that their names would not sound as Jewish as it might be. My own grandfather, Allah V'sholem, uh, changed his name in order to sound more like a German and less like a, a Russian. And so we know that names are important. N the ability or the authority to give a name implies hegemony over whoever or whatever it is you give that name to. In Genesis, Adam and Eve are invited by God to name all of the creatures of the earth, and it's a symbol of their being superior to them as human beings. But for us in our Jewish community, the idea of a name is tied up with the idea of who we are identified with. And how do we identify as Jews? We had Reformed Jews who didn't give Jewish names at all because they wanted to feel fully American. Then again, we have people who give names for their children in honor of a deceased relative or Sephardic and Middle Eastern Jews in honor of a living relative in order to keep that identity and that sense of yichis, that sense of Jewish pedigree in the most positive of terms, alive and going on. Sometimes people react and want to find out Jewish names only in extremis. Many years ago, I took a phone call from a gentleman who was uh, quite distraught and wanted to know if the congregation had a record of his grandmother's Hebrew name. And I explained to him that we might not, and he was very upset. And a part of, the, part of the conversation, what came out was his grandmother had died in Europe uh, prior to World War II. But he expected that every synagogue and every Jewish institution had a list of everybody's Jews' Hebrew name, whenever and wherever they lived. This gentleman was looking for a connection to his Jewish roots through the name the truth is that the name is only the surface. It's an important surface, but the real question is how do we live as Jews? What kind of Jewish activities are we involved in other than just paying dues to the synagogue and making our contributions to worthy Jewish causes? The question is not, is your name a Jewish name? But the question is, is your name associated with Judaism and activity in the Jewish community? And so as we start reading this book of Exodus, this book of names, the book that gives us our name as the people of God, then a good week, and it's a good few months, to start thinking about who we are that gives us and what we are that gives us our good Jewish names.